And that is our big story tonight. New developments coming in by the hour after the violence overnight. So let's get right to the very latest for you. Here's what we know so far. Nine officers injured. Five of them were shot. Two people are dead. One the suspected shooter, the other the victim in the initial shooting that brought police to that scene early this morning. To give you some perspective on where this happened, South Phoenix, 51st Avenue and Broadway. And that's where our Faye Fredericks is joining us live. She's setting up our team coverage for us tonight. Faye? A brazen attack on law enforcement, and she says it is happening more and more often, both here and across the nation. Tonight, four officers are still in the hospital, and many are facing a very difficult recovery. Now, the bullets started flying around 2 a.m. after police responded to a call of a woman shot. Police say the suspect tried to lure the officer inside the home. He refused. That's when police say Morris Jones opened fire on that first officer. Incredible. The first officer able to scramble to safety, call for help. The neighborhood now packed with police when another man, not considered a suspect, brings a baby girl outside and sets her down outside the door. He walks over to police, then officers go to rescue the baby. That's when police say Jones opens fire again, hitting four officers, four other officers hit by ricochets and shrapnel. All of the police officers expected to survive earlier this evening. We heard from both the police chief and Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego. Nine officers shot or injured. That is an incredibly heavy weight for all of us. I want to say thank you to the dispatch team, the medical professionals and firefighters, as well as our partner agencies who were part of today. They serve this community with excellence. I said it this morning and I'll say it again. If I seem upset, I, I am. This is senseless. It makes no sense. I'm trying to make rhyme and reason to this, but this kind of violence has no place in our city and it continues to happen over and over again. And tonight, police tell us uh, the woman who was initially shot and the suspected gunman are both dead. Our IBC 15 investigators broke the story on who he is and police now confirming it. Investigator Melissa Blasius continues our team coverage digging into his past. That's right, Faye. The suspect is identified as Morris Richard Jones III. We found the 36-year-old man had been in and out of prison his entire adult life. We also learned Phoenix police investigated Jones for domestic violence less than a year ago. I don't know what was going through his head. This woman has a child with Morris Richard Jones III, but not the child taken out of the house. She says he called her after police arrived Friday morning. He said that it was the police was outside. And I stayed on the phone with him until I arrived here. Phoenix police previously took a domestic violence report against Jones in 2021. According to this court document, he reportedly punched an ex-girlfriend and took her 9mm gun. It's unclear whether that ex-girlfriend is the same woman who was killed in the home. The ABC 15 investigators traced Jones's criminal history back to 2004 when he was imprisoned in Oklahoma for a car theft case. Then in 2006, he was charged in a federal firearms case. Investigators say he was a Crips gang member nicknamed PD Gun. Jones was sentenced to 84 months in prison. Later, on supervised release, he went back to prison twice for drug use. The Federal Bureau of Prisons shows he was let out in October 2019. Just four months later, in February 2020, federal prosecutors in Arizona charged Jones with smuggling illegal immigrants. He was sentenced to probation but broke the rules in 2021 by testing positive for drugs again and spent another short stint behind bars. Lakeniel Jones says the suspect was his brother. He didn't talk about the criminal past, but said his brother may have been suffering from depression. He should have called and said something to let people know that he felt like this and he was going to do this. A life of crime ending in bursts of gunfire, hurting police, endangering a baby and killing a woman inside that home. We're still working to identify that woman and we'll share her story as soon as we know more. I'm investigator Melissa Blasius, ABC 15, Arizona. Now, Melissa, thanks. All right, from the suspect now, we want to focus on the nine officers that were involved in this. In this again, five of them shot, four of them hit by ricochets or shrapnel. All of them are expected to survive, but this was an intense 
intense scene this morning. Video overnight captures the emotions from the scene. Watch as police help carry a hurt officer away from the scene. Our Claudia Rupsich picks up our team coverage. She's live at the hospital where some of those officers are being treated. Claudia. As you mentioned, four of those officers who were shot are still being treated tonight at the hospital. One of them has critical injuries, but like you said, the good news from PD tonight is that they're all expected to survive. I do want to show you some of the ribbons that are outside of the hospital here. Those blue ribbons are lining the entire property, and those are here to show, show support for the Phoenix Police Department. We spoke to one of the women who was out here putting them up this morning. We hope that they know that they're supported, that um, they can count on us in good times and bad. She's a member of Operation Blue Ribbon, where they were out here hanging ribbons and balloons outside the hospital, saying they were heartbroken to hear about this morning's ambush. And they want officers to know and their families to know that they're grateful for them. The Phoenix sergeant on scene earlier told us it's really hard to see their fellow officers get hurt this way. And it just speaks to the kind of people these officers are choosing this job, knowing the dangers that come with it. Um, you know, it's hard. It, uh, I think it just shows uh, the type of person that decides to do this career. You know, it's not for the money. Um, it's not for um, the accolades. It's it's a calling. These people choose this profession because something about it speaks to them and they want to help their community. They want to serve their community and they realize that there are um, serious dangers associated with it. Um, but it is hard. It's hard to see our, our brothers and sisters get hurt. And I know it's hard for the community to see uh, community members hurt. You know, it's not just we're not the only ones that were injured here today. And the mayor earlier saying that she spoke to one of the officers before he went into surgery today and that all of their actions today, she called them selfless and brave. As soon as we learn updates on the other officers and their conditions, we'll bring those to you. For now, reporting live in Phoenix, I'm Claudia Rupsic, ABC 15, Arizona. Uh, Claudia, thanks. Some of those injured officers were shot while trying to get that baby to safety. Again, that baby is safe tonight, but we want to get back to the video now. Going moment by moment through those terrifying, that terrifying time for those officers as they went to rescue that baby. Our photojournalist uh, Rick Lebo capturing the moment police approached the home with guns drawn, our cameras rolling when that baby girl was almost caught in the crossfire. And you can see a man who is not the suspect placed the baby on the ground. Police command him to put his hands up and walk backwards toward them. And while officers go in to pull the baby to safety, the suspect strikes, shooting four officers. Thankfully, the officers are recovering. And again, that baby girl is okay. I asked police chief Jerry Williams about this terrifying situation. Having that young baby in the barrage of gunfire, um, I'm, I'm a parent, most parents out there, grandparents, um, all the above, it just kind of gives you chills to think that that, that that person, that little human mm -hmm. who did nothing to anyone is involved in the middle of a, of a firefight. Yeah. Yeah, a very intense scene out here. And as you can see around me, the police presence is still out here. The police tape is still up. And the home where all of this happened is just riddled with bullets. Some of the windows have been shot out. So we're going to continue our coverage throughout the evening. But guys, right now, I want to send it back in to the studio.